Hello and welcome to Fast Forward Newsline. My name is Michael Welch. Join me now is Julian Cooper. Thank you for joining us, Julie. You're, Julian, you're a longtime uh, producer and contributor to CKUW and the Community News Commons. Well, today we're going to be talking about the, uh, the waste stream and uh, a lot of the materials that uh, seem to find their way into our garbage and our landfills and that maybe there are some things that we could do to mitigate that. So um, I just wanted to you know, ask you a little bit about uh, what you've researched. Uh, I guess uh, start off with some of all places uh, at the beginning in the sense of uh, baby wares and uh, car seats and buggies and the like. So um, what have you discovered about what these uh, devices? Baby car seats are something that has an actual specific date on them from the time of purchase. And the reason why is because that's the predicted date that they're still within good safe limits after use from pulling them in and out of cars and using them as carriers and dumping, dropping them on the ground, that kind of thing. So they have to be, after a certain time, if you want to be within safe regulations of use, they have to be discarded. Now, it's very it's hard. It's like after only two years or something and then they're gone? Yeah. Uh, it's very hard to take the materials off and separate the plastic and materials and hardwares. And so a lot of people don't recycle them. There has been a program going on in Vancouver. However, people also having to deliver their articles to a place that exists, it could be upwards of $70 shipping costs. So a lot of them are going to landfills because there's not a regular service or there's nothing really close. And they're quite huge, these items. They're, they're almost double size, size of the baby. We've also got baby buggies, which, as I understand it, I don't think they have a date on them, but they sure don't last like they used to. In the older days, these things lasted through the generations as well as through neighbors uh, going right away after the babies got to walk and maybe another generation over there. And people were even stealing wheels off them so that they could make go-karts. Nowadays, you get a baby buggy, and before the one baby is fully able and comfortable to walk on his or her own, there's also there's a, a wheel taken, fallen off. Sometimes they're a double bogey kind of thing, and you see that on the sidewalk, and sometimes three blocks away, you'll see the cart where somebody gave up pushing it on three wheels. And so when you imagine this happening, and that's going to the landfill, you've also got these things going straight from homes or, or wherever else they may be into the landfills. And they're humongous. They're bigger than car seats, okay. sometimes five times the size. Yeah. So um, what about uh, another item, uh, costume jewelry? What, what are the concerns there? Costume jewelry is cheap jewelry that's sold for anywhere for five bucks or maybe more or less. And oftentimes it is made out of many materials, including what's called a base material, base metal. And it's also got various coatings on it. And oftentimes it contains lead and nickel and various other hard uh, metals. And those can be very dangerous, especially if they're consumed through the mouth. Now, some countries uh, want to ban them altogether. Some countries want to ban them from sale t to children. So they still end up in those cases, they still can end up in the children's hands although some stores declare that they have put them in the adult-only kind of jewelry sections. What about regulations in Canada? Regulations in Canada, they're saying uh, they, they don't want them for children, and so some stores will actually try not to sell them in, in the certain areas where the toys and kids' jewelry are sold. But they can, you can also find some of these material in plastic beads and various other materials that uh, are in toys and jewelry mm -hmm. and other children's items. Okay. So these uh, items, do they eventually end up um, in the garbage or do they in <laughs> Well, they're very hard to recycle. I actually recycle some materials, uh, like if something's damaged, I'll fix it. But costume jewelry, sometimes it's just beyond repair because it corrodes. And if you try to polish it, you'll take various coats off of it, and sometimes that's not conducive to making something look nice again. Depends on how it's designed. But then I'm also afraid that I might be exposing myself because it goes through the skin as well during wear and also during any kind of repairs. So. Uh, these things do, will end up in the garbage. Some of them are quite small, 
but they do add up and they are a waste of resources in making uh, shipping and uh, purchasing them and then having to just throw them out sometimes a week or two after they've been purchased or maybe months later and just laying around the house uh, unusable. Now what about something as simple as shoes? Shoes, there's something called the Goodyear welt and what that is a, is a stitching process by which the sole is actually sewed onto the boot and that tends to last a lot longer than many glues that are used as adhesives and they also uh, are common in work boots but not 100%. Now, so the uh, shoes last longer when they're stitched than when they're glued? They can, yes, they can last a lot longer. There's some Sometimes people have claimed they've gone uh, almost their life use. Uh, the thing is, uh, a lot of shoes are made to break down and, uh, or they're just made without concentration to the effect of causing them to last. They break down inside at the heel, where the heel rubs up and down. They also break down at the uh, outer part of the toe where the toe bends and they break down in the soles or the soles come off. And I can repair a soles by some kind of sh uh, sh shoe uh, glue kind of stuff that I've used. That's proven pretty good. But sometimes if the material is actually breaking down as well as coming apart, there's not much hope for that. And so I know that uh, shoes should actually last you a good 10 years. I've had that happen, but it's rare. And they should also break down first before breaking. They should break in first before breaking down pardon me for that, and oftentimes it's the other way around. They break down before they break in. Well, it sounds like there's a lot of uh, issues around, uh, you know, just the way our society, we just build these things that fall apart and end up in the garbage when we could, they could last a lot longer if we just used a little bit of a uh, um, certain amount of ingenuity or, or what have you. But, uh, but Julian, uh, once again, I want to thank you for uh, your research and for uh, contributing this uh, report. I appreciate joining you. Okay. We've been listening to the Fast Forward News Line. Another fresh edition shows up periodically inside this little box. Uh, we'd like to thank the Social Justice Fund of Unifor, as well as the Government of Canada, and the Community Radio Fund of Canada for their general support. Be a sponsor of the Fast Forward News Line. Just send us a note to greenplanetmonitor.net. My name is Michael Welch. Bye for now. Got it. <laughs>